Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for checking out my channel and subscribing. Um, so, I recently upgraded my studio, um, bought a new computer, and um, also upgraded my software from Logic Pro 7 to Logic Pro 9. And um, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I had to do and what the steps were in order for me to upgrade from my older computer to my, uh, my newer one. And if I had any issues with software installation or you know going to get new drivers, um, so let me show you real quick what I did first. Um, I went ahead and, of course, hooked up the computer, um, and uh, you know I had to hook up the key, not the keyboard, but I didn't use the the magic mouse because um, I like to edit my um, my my music and stuff a lot when I'm working, and I like to assign the toolbox that has the pencil eraser and um, the glue stick and all those other awesome tools that Logic has to a mouse button so I can easily wherever I am on the screen just click with the right mouse button and then the menu opens up and I can just select whatever tool I want to use so I didn't use this mouse um, with the new computer um, I did use the original keyboard um, it's an awesome keyboard uh, I don't like the fact that the number it doesn't have the number keypad on the side but um, I have to get used to now using numbers on the top, but whatever, it, I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, it's a very lightweight keyboard, no cables or anything. It's uh, wireless. So uh, pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Um, instead, what I used for my mouse was I just used my old uh, trackball mouse here. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you that when you grab the camera. Actually, I'll just zoom in. So that's my old trackball mouse right there. and. I prefer to use a trackball when I'm working on my music anyway, it's just faster than using a mouse. You don't have to continually pick up your hand, you can just use the trackball to uh, move around pretty quickly. So, using the trackball, um, it's two button trackball, and uh, my mouse of choice when working with um, MIDI and audio files, you know, for quick reasons. So, um, the first thing I had to do was, once I got it all set up, I went ahead and installed the software. So um, the very first CD I put in was, of course, the um, install CD, and it'll walk you through the process of setting it everything up. So it was the um, Logic Studio install DVD. That was the first one I put in, and let me tell you, it takes quite a bit of time to install all these CDs. So plan on doing something else while this is installing because it doesn't take five minutes. It's pretty long. So that was the first CD. The next three CDs, which was, um, I want to say it was either, I believe it was either Jam Pack or it might even been Audio Content. Anyway, it's either one of the two. It's going to ask you to install um, either the Jam Pack next, and I don't recall exactly which one it was because it was pre pretty late, <coughs> or it's going to ask you to install the Audio Content. Once you're done installing these six DVDs, um, the next thing it's going to ask you to do is to install it's going to ask you to install the um, I believe it is the either the additional content CD or the um, demo content so quite a bit of CDs you have to install and it takes a long time so be aware it's not going to take five minutes to install the software um, and you pretty much, if you want to get it done quicker, you'll sit around and wait for it to finish. So that's pretty much what I did, and let me tell you, it took a long time. So anyway, um, those are the CDs that I installed. Once I was done installing the CDs, the next thing I went ahead and did was, of course, I was a little bit afraid that there was going to be issues with hardware and the new computer. Um, so the very next thing... <clears throat> I did was I just turned on Logic and uh, just to see if it would if it even open up and it and it did it opened up fine without any problems. So then I shut down the computer and restarted. The next thing I wanted to do was I need a way to be able to control all those sounds in the computer and I really didn't care too much about all the external equipment at first. I really was more concerned about just getting the internal sounds working first and getting that MIDI controller keyboard right there, the Core X5 that I'm using um, before I did anything else. So. Um, the next thing I had to do was hook up my my MIDI. 
so I could control the sounds in the, in, the, in the software with this keyboard that you're looking at right here on the screen. So um, I went ahead and I hooked up the MIDI cables from the Mutu 89, uh, excuse me, not the 8960 HD, I did that later, that was the, um, that's the audio interface, but the Mutu MIDI timepiece. So it's this one right here, as you can see, Mark of the Unicorn, MIDI timepiece, um, MTPAV. So I found the cable for that, plugged it in directly to the back of the monitor, which is basically the computer. So I just found a slot in the back, a USB slot, and plugged it in. And so I plugged it in back here. Also one of the things I want to mention real quick about Logic Studio, if you're upgrading from Logic Pro 7 or I believe 8, um, it came with this little white key, it's the dongle key, this guy right here, USB key. I didn't have to install Logic 7 and then install Logic 8 upgrade or Logic 9 upgrade over it. I just basically plugged in the key and then installed it. So just make a note of that if you're upgrading to um, from Logic Pro 7. You don't need to install the software and then install the new software over it. You just put your key in and install it and that's it. So and there is a registration process that you have to go through to fill all your information. So but whatever. Um, so anyway, I just plugged my MTV MT MIDI timepiece, Martin Hero MIDI timepiece, directly in the back of the computer. Um, so once I was done with that, I went ahead and opened up Logic 9, tried to install the, the software for it, the CD that came with it, and of course, it didn't work anymore because the drivers, they didn't make drivers uh, compatible back then on the, on the DVD to the new hardware. So I had to go out to the Mutu website um, and sign up, become a member, do that to see if I could find the driver. So I went ahead and went online and I'm going to have another video here in a few minutes that actually shows you how to do that and get the correct driver. So um, I had to of course sign up for um, becoming a member on the Mutu website and uh, then I pretty much went to um, uh, I searched on the the equipment that I was looking for so I put in marketing corn media timepiece um, and then I basically went and looked for the drivers and then I found the drivers and I went ahead and installed them shut down the computer restarted it and then I went back into Logic 9 and then it worked so um, I didn't have any problems getting that to work and I was extremely happy that it worked let me just tell you as soon as I open up Logic 9 it, it opened up and it worked fine it, there was no problems I could select instrument um, and I could play back the instrument through the keyboard so there was no issues once I got the drivers from the website it worked it worked fine so the next thing I had to do and this really concerned me was is the 896 HD because I really didn't want to have to go out and buy another piece of hardware just so it would work with my new computer and Logic 9 so I was really concerned about the 896 HD working um, again I just went out to Mutu website and I did a search on 896 HD um, compatibility issues basically with drivers so of course the old CD that came with it didn't work either so um, <clears throat> you can I mean of course you can google it but it really makes no sense because I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to do it anyway so um, I went ahead and I had to get a new cable as well which was a Firewire uh, 800 to 400 because the old um, computer that I had was Firewire 400 and the new computer is has a Firewire 800 plug on the back of it so you had to go buy a new cable so I spent thirty dollars which kind of I think is really expensive for a cable um, I, I don't think that's reasonable I think fifteen dollars would have been more reasonable than twenty nine dollars now you can buy um, adapters too but I didn't really want to wait a week or you know longer to get that in the mail because I wanted to go ahead and get my system up and running now but um, so anyway uh, so I went ahead and got the cable and I'll show you what the cable looks like as well um, the back of it so So this is the cable right here, and it's now just basically, let's see if I can get this here, you can see what it looks like. Let's see, where's the cable, here we go. So it's just a square plug now, that's the um, Firewire 800, and it does not work in an older Mac because that's um, that was the Firewire 400, which is 
kind of more um, triangular shaped on, on the top. So anyway, um, if you have one, you'll know what I'm talking about. So if you upgrade to a new Mac, you got to go get a new cable. And this cable works fine. I, I read some of the reviews about it, and some people were saying, oh, it pops out all the time, and this is that. But I haven't had any issues with it. Maybe they're moving around their computers a lot. But um, it works fine for me for now, and it gets the job done. I mean, it is sending the signal between the 896 HD to the computer and everything. So it works fine. Um, anyway, so I got the cable, plugged it in, and, um, and it works fine. So, and it fits pretty snug and tight. I don't, I don't think it's going to pop out. As soon as I plug it in, you can see it's automatically already recognizing my 896 HD on the screen. This window just popped open here, um, which basically says that it's there. So whenever I, I turn on my computer and I turn the 896 HD, this little Mutu audio setup always pops up. And then this is where you would basically um, configure it. So um, anyway, also what shows you that it's set up is here is the microphone. The microphone icon on the bottom of the screen, which is right here, that's indicating that my Mutu audio setup is there. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much what I did to get this set up. Um, I had to download all the drivers to make everything work. Now, the other thing I was concerned about was the um, the mixer you see right here, um, which is also um, this is a Mackie. And as soon as I plugged it in to the back of the computer, it's just a USB hookup. Bam! It came up just like that. As soon as I opened Logic 9, all the faders went f sliding up to zero. It recognized all the instrument uh, channels, and it worked. So no issues with that at all. Um, the only thing I really have left to do is basically just rewire inside the MIDI audio setup um, the rest of my uh, the rest of my keyboards and sound modules. Which I I would recommend if you have a setup just um, writing down what your old setup was. So when you go back into your audio MIDI setup you can just instantly remap your whole setup you know just whatever take a picture of it or whatever with your phone or just save it someplace so anyway um that's this part of the video the next one will be on how to get the drivers for the mutu and uh, for the mutu 896 hd and also the drivers for um the mt ntp the midi timepiece from mark of the unicorn so thanks for watching my uh, my videos and subscribing to my channel uh, if you haven't subscribed please do so if you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff uh, thanks again. Bye.